There we go. A little late, but better than never. We, uh, I was trying to do it through OBS, and for some reason it wasn't connecting, so we are here now like we should be. I hope. Is that working? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So uh, tonight, uh, I'm only going to be here for probably an hour or so just to hang out. I'm sure you guys, uh, well, some of you guys are probably not even here out doing stuff anyways like you're supposed to. But uh, um, I have got my, my uh, Techno EB48 2.0 all ready to go, and I'm going to be soldering in, um, getting my speed control all ready. I got the uh, I got the XR8 SCT. Pretty excited about that, and uh, I already kind of opened it up and checked on the footprint, and it is perfect for this car. So it's not too big. I got my my Rudog motor, and the cool thing about the Rudog motor is if you can see that it's got a it's got a fan, a metal fan bolted into the front of it. And because of that, it takes up a little bit more room here. And the XR8 fits. Look at that. It's going to be nice and clean. It's going to look good. It's going to be great. So I'm a happy camper. And uh, now I get to solder some stuff. So that's always fun. So, yeah, it's New Year's Eve. 2020 just happened to land on a Thursday, so here we are. I know I skipped last week because it was uh, Christmas Eve, and we were out going to uh, Christmas Eve service, and and then uh, had to kind of get all the presents ready and everything and make that all good, so I figured I didn't want to, uh, didn't want to switch anything or... Uh, I didn't want to miss another one, so. Nick Nutnaus on here, he wants to know if uh, the Plex uh, now being at 75% capacity, spectators are welcome to watch, even if we don't know anyone who's racing. Um, absolutely. Uh, even when we are at 50% capacity, uh, if you're out on the dirt track, right, that's a whole different building and with capacity, so. Uh, you were fine to come out and check it out uh, pretty much at any point. So uh, definitely come out. It's going to be uh, – should be really fun next weekend. I got a lot of work ahead of me next week. We've got uh, – the track is just bad. <laughs> it's just beat up. And uh, it's definitely time to do some work out there. So um, I got a – a bunch of changes that I'm going to put down and, and, uh, we'll be doing that Sunday, uh, a little bit of Monday and then all day Tuesday and the track should be ready to go. So this is not a fro boy shirt, Jason Haley. This is my Randy Marsh shirt from South park. It's one of my Christmas presents. I'm so happy I got this and it's so obscure that, that only certain people are going to know that this is Randy. So um, I don't normally wear blue, but it's the only color they had. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty stoked to wear this. It sucks though, because, uh, it's winter time. So I'm wearing a coat or a hoodie most of the time. Right. So the only time that I ever get to wear this where people can see it is going to be either, uh, here or maybe at the podcast or I'll have to wait until, uh, springtime. So I'm going to get a rubber band. So I make my, uh, I make my vice out of a pair of pliers. So uh, if any of you guys have ever watched the um, how to solder video uh, videos that I did, I did two of them. Um, you know, I don't have a fancy, fancy schmancy vice or anything like that. I've always just sort of pair of pliers, rubber band, bam, instant, uh, instant holder. So hooray. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, put my five millimeter plugs onto my 12 gauge wire. 
Uh, this comes pre-tinned already from, uh, from Hobby Wing, so I don't have to worry about that. Get my solder out here. And uh, yeah, just a little bit about the build. I know um, two weeks ago I was starting on it. Uh, we didn't get very far because we had a pretty good show. Lots of questions. Um, but uh, it went together extremely well. It was uh, such a good car to build. Techno really does a good job with breaking down their instructions. Uh, the car is pretty simple to, uh, to build. And I don't know. Can't really ask for anything better than that. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. I'm excited to get it running. I probably won't be able to get it running uh, for this Techno Series race um, because I won't have a body ready to go. But And I probably won't have tires ready to go either. I need tires and, uh, and wheels. And I, uh, I don't have any yet. So probably going to sit this one out, but I'm just going to get it as close to, uh, as close to ready to go as I can. And this should, these aren't the flat kind, which are a little bit more difficult to solder. Come on now. But we want a really good connection. So a lot of heat gets in there. There we go. <sighs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm never, uh, I never think about this stuff until I need it. So that's kind of the deal. And then I want it to look really nice. So we're going to cut this guy off like this and slide him down. Steve RC says, uh, does Techno have a two-wheel drive? Uh, no, they don't. They are pretty much only interested in uh, making four-wheel drive cars right now. I don't uh, I don't really see that changing either. I think um, they kind of have their thing and uh, and it works so I don't, I don't think they're gonna have one. That's actually so I'm not a big fan or I wasn't a big fan of uh, being sponsored guy. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, I was a TLR driver from, 2006 to 2017 i think uh december of 2017 i kind of took a look around and there's all these cool cars that i'd never get to drive and i'm like you know what i want to do that and so uh i uh pretty much didn't renew any of my contracts except with j concepts and um that was that but uh i kind of had a change of heart this year a little bit and uh um i still want to be able to run whatever tool drive i want because i kind of bounce around from tlr to team associated you know kind of that you know they tlr comes out with a new kit kind of want to drive it associated comes out with a new kit definitely want to drive it so it's, it's kind of this this thing so uh with techno being mainly an eight scale company and not having a tool drive is perfect that's a perfect setup so Thanks, Lance. Lance says, Happy New Year's. I'm excited for tonight. I'm excited for tomorrow. I'm going to uh, probably take a nap after we're done here. And I got my alarm set because uh, the Mandalorian finished last week. But then Cobra Kai is on uh, Netflix tomorrow at 2 a.m. And so I'm going to get on and... Uh, Watch that. I'll probably binge it. So if you come into the Plex tomorrow and you see me, I will probably be very tired from staying up so I can watch uh, Cobra Kai. Got to set up the carpet track tomorrow too, so that's going to be lame. <laughs> that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a long 
Friday. Got the end of the carpet syndicate taking place um, on Saturday. That's our carpet off-road. Got just so much going on. We, we had a small break and now we're just right back into it again. And then I got to start planning uh, next summer already, you know, with the summer series, our winners, uh, our uh, springtime race. There's just so much to do. So my son decided to leave my soldering iron plugged in uh, for about three days, I think, last week. And uh, I kind of decided it was time to get him his own soldering iron. So, so he got that one, and I got this one. Luckily... Soldering irons are cheap now, so it's not that big of a deal, but I was more worried about burning the house down. So, okay. Wow, there's 26 people in here. That's awesome. Uh, so what's everybody doing? Anybody doing anything tonight? I know um, I asked my wife if she was interested in going out. And she's like, absolutely not. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like when you reach a, a certain age, you're just like, I don't really care anymore. Uh, but I thought about it. Uh, so Wiz is on here. He wants to know what's a good EC to look at for a 110 scale stock racing. Uh, so... Um, you really can't go wrong with the hobby wing, just stock. Uh, it's cheap. It's only 50 bucks. There's also, um, I think Reedy's got one, the 600 Z or whatever. It's only like 60 bucks. Um, there's a couple, uh, there's a couple of, um, other stock ones like Orion still got that R1, but you know, it's a little pricey compared to everybody else's stuff now. So. Um, I still think for the best value, best bang for your buck, the hobby wing, uh, just stock is still where it's at. The plex carries them for 54 99. In fact, that's what I used in my, uh, my 13, five stadium truck, uh, this fall, just a regular old just stock. I didn't even really change much of the settings. Um, so can't go wrong with that one. Get that little, uh, $26 programming box and you're all set. Bob's playing games with the family. We played uh, we played Clue on Christmas Day last week. That was fun. We haven't done stuff like that in a while. Okay. So now I need to measure how long I want my battery wires to be. I'm going to show you guys uh, one way to keep from blowing your speed controllers up by plugging them in backwards is to uh, always have the wire. Ooh, I don't want that. Always have the wire. Um, so your batteries, right, are positive and negative. So I'm going to make this wire shorter and this wire longer so that the red wire can never reach the black wire. That way... I don't accidentally make a mistake and uh, plug it in wrong and blow it up. So we're going to measure this real quick before I cut it all off. Drag brake, um, really with uh, with stock, you know, 
stock racing, you don't, you don't normally want a dr lot of drag break um, because you're trying to keep the momentum up the whole time. It is uh, it does differentiate per driver. Um, when I race 13, five, four wheel drive, um, like I did this summer, I pretty much never ran any drag break. I kept it at zero. Um, but you also kind of have to find those, uh, brake settings too, finger brake where you don't spin out either. You don't want that either. So, um, but I would recommend something pretty low. Um, now modified that's different, but, uh, but for 17.5 or 13.5, I think, I think a very low, as low as you can tolerate, put it that way. If you're really, really good at finger braking, zero. And if you're bad at it, turn it up a little bit, but I wouldn't put it up maybe past five. Um, that's just my, my thoughts on that. Steve RC, um, I think you mentioned the DX5 is a good guy. I've been seeing something about the DX5 Smart. Is that some new Smart stuff worth it? Well, um, so I don't, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with the built-in Smart stuff on my own. Um, the DX5C is a great controller um, as long as. Um, as long as you're okay with just um, knowing that it's going to be kind of a kind of a, a slower radio, I guess, than the Sanwa or even the Futaba stuff, right? Um, now their DX five R or DX is it DX five Pro? So their newest one, um, you know, that's kind of the middle ground. It's kind of like an MT forty four or a um, uh, maybe 4PL, like from Futaba. So, um, you know, I'd probably look at that one if you want to step up and you want to be able to use a lot of their smart stuff. Um, the problem is I think the smart stuff only works if you're using their speed controllers. So then I think it doesn't really matter. I might... Uh, I don't think I'm wrong on that one. I think I think to utilize the smart stuff... You need to use their speed controller as well, which, you know, I, I would bet you they're going to come out with their own electronics, but right now I don't think they have any like racing, um, electronics. Uh, tactical overload, any B6 T we do, we have a whole bunch. We have like, uh, at least two or three of them at the store. So, in fact, I just sold one today. You can, uh, yeah. Oops. All right. Uh, let's see. It's starting to get hot. So now we're going to grab this guy. And so I, uh, my, my goal for uh, this next year is to have uh, this all be a little bit better. I've already kind of gotten the lights a little bit better this year. Um, but I do want to have like a second camera that's up pointing down. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Not that, you know, it matters that much, but, um, I thought I was going to be using an OBS tonight, but for some reason it wasn't linking up and, uh, I'm not here to troubleshoot it or my sister's not here to help me troubleshoot it. So I just kind of said, I'll worry about it next week. I'll bring it with me to the podcast again and call it good.
<laughs> is the store going to have a stimulus checks uh, uh, sale on kits? Um, so I wouldn't call it a stimulus check sale. There are a few, there's a few things that we're heavy on that we, that we still have a lot of after Christmas. So, um, we might be marking a few things down. Uh, we already knocked, we already knocked down the price on the outcast 8s. Um, but we might be doing, we might be doing something. I don't know. Uh, watch our Facebook page because we'll announce anything that we're doing on there. It won't be anything too crazy, especially on kits that sell really well. Like you're going to, you're not going to see the arm of granite um, or arm of centons going on sale anytime soon. Um, you know, you're not going to see, you know, axial kits or anything like that uh, going on sale. Cause frankly, we sell too many of them right now. So there's no need to put them on sale. Plus we're priced the same as the internet. So whatever. Michael Root says, my bro just bought a telescope from the Hobbyplex, still figuring it out. Yeah. So um, the hardest part about telescopes is the setup, I've noticed. And uh, once you get once you get everything set up, I'm actually, full disclosure, my telescope's holding the camera. Because that's the only thing that I had with, with a tripod. So I have a um, Celestron um, Astro 114, and uh, it works really good. And even I've had, uh, I've had to clean the mirrors, the main, uh, uh, the main mirror uh, a couple times just because I don't have the covers for it anymore. So it gets a little dusty, but I did notice we dropped it once and the mirror, uh, got off kilter right in the back. It has these little, uh, screws and you can, you can actually, uh, twist them and you can change the mirror, uh, to pivot one way or the other. Cause a lot of times you need it centered and uh, that's how you can recenter it. Right. So I've noticed that um, sometimes uh, that can be a little off and that'll cause um, a telescope to not quite work like you think it should. So, but other than that, I did have a guy, it might've been two years ago now where uh, uh, he bought a Celestron and uh um, uh, he brought, tried to bring it back like twice. And he's like, I can't, I can't get it to work. And I'm like, well, I'll take it home and I'll mess with it and I'll get it to work for you. And I actually took photos with my phone of like the moon and uh, Saturn and stuff like that. And, and, uh, I showed it to him and I said, dude, your telescope works fine. And, uh, he took it home, brought it back. That, like the next day I said, I, I can't see anything. And I'm like, well, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and I, I, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. You're doing it wrong. So they can be weird sometimes for sure. Um, a life goal of mine is to get a better telescope, like computerized so I can take pictures and, uh, and have it, have it going. So, Fireworks are going off outside right now. John Haas is on here. He said Bennington's blown up. I don't doubt it. I think that um, I think that all the people that like fireworks around here uh, do the the New Year's thing just so they can get mentioned on neighborhood app. That's my uh, that's my own personal theory on all that because undoubtedly somebody right now is going on neighborhood and being like. What's the deal with the fireworks? This is so. There's my thought about that. <laughs> uh, Dan J was at the Plex today. Broke his front right shock tower bolt on his Techno and had to order new. Not sure how he did it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not known for breaking stuff that easy, but, uh, but I am pretty hard on e-buggy because it's so easy to have all that power at your fingertips. Very, very easy. 
this is a uh, 2000 kV motor and uh, you know that can be that can be uh, good or that can be bad. Uh, JF Kansas on here is some telescope can watch station and go over space station. And, uh, um, uh, probably it's kind of hard to get to space station though, cause it's going so fast. So basically you got to have it. The easiest way is to have it set up. And this is where a computerized one comes into play at. If you know that the station is going to be going overhead, you can, um, you can actually find its coordinates on Google, and then you can plug that in and it will, uh, it'll basically, um, not track it, but you can have your telescope kind of sitting, waiting for it. And then when it passes by, mm -hmm. if you got a, a picture one, you can get a cool picture of it. Every once in a while on Reddit, I'll see somebody, uh, that's posting pictures of, uh, like the space station whizzing by the moon or something doing a transit, uh, like that. It's kind of cool. Uh, green spring, some techno. I don't know what the, I did. I honestly, we were so busy today. Like, um, you know, how we had to close early because of the snow on Tuesday. And then yesterday we were busy, but not like crazy busy. Today was a nonstop intense, uh, just crazy day of, of busyness. So, uh, I didn't have time to check anything. I, I did uh, some orders. I thought we maybe, because a lot of times New Year's Eve is slow and uh, it was not, but a lot of times, you know, I was trying to do some orders in the back and no shot, no chance. Wow, there's 32 people on here. That's fantastic. So, uh, so what I'm doing is just uh, talking, and uh, and then I'm also wiring in my Hobby Wing um, speed controller for my Techno EB840 or EB48.2, 2.0, 2.0. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, Gary Silkwood's on here and, and he's kind of got the same idea I have. Like uh like a goal of mine is to one day have uh a much better telescope that's computerized that will track. So exactly like you said, you can just sort of set it up and be inside somewhere so you don't have to you don't have to freeze because that's not any fun. It's crazy because a lot of times what I want to see uh, out here anyways, some of the best nights are when it's cold and that's kind of lame. And then in the summertime, a lot of times I'll be out there um, like this, you know, this summer we had the comet, right? But the comet was over there, so I couldn't get it from my house. But, uh, you know, Jupiter and, and uh, Saturn were up there pretty much all summer and a lot of times when I went out there, uh, I'm just getting bit up, like bit up, like like there you go, mosquitoes and stuff. It was terrible. Little gnats, the little gnats around here suck. They just make it not very enjoyable. There was a uh, there was a lot of people on the track today. And, uh, we had some, we had some pros today come from Des Moines, Mason Fuller and, uh, Tom Rennernecht came from Des Moines and got some laps in and then just a whole bunch of, of people checking out their new cars. And I mean, we had to sell like maybe 20 track passes. That's how busy we were. It was great. 
It was really awesome. Michael Root wants to know how my crawler is in the snow. Um, I haven't taken it in the snow. Uh, I'm one of those guys that doesn't really want to get my crawler wet. Like, I wouldn't drive it into a creek or anything like that. Um, unless it was either not my crawler or, um, or if I like made a specific one just to do that with, um, cause I don't want it to like get all rusty and stuff. So I haven't taken it in the snow. Plus I hate the cold, man. I hate being cold. I really don't like snow. Um, I'm in the wrong state for that, but I don't have a choice. Uh, because I want to stay married, so, you know, it is what it is. There was uh, multiple cars that got broken by, a, by an X-Max today, I think. <laughs> so, there was a guy out there with an X-Max. All right. See, I just don't I'm kind of changing my mind on these plugs. I thought I had I thought I had five millimeter plugs around here that were flat. I'm, I might redo these because I don't like how they stick down. It's much cleaner to do it the other way. Trying to figure out, trying to remember where I put that stuff. Because I know I have bins with uh, with plugs in them. A vid on YouTube where they put a real grenade in an RC truck. I'll have to look that one up. That actually sounds cool to watch. There was an old um, kids show on like Nickelodeon or something a long time ago where they um, like the kids had to drive and they were, I think they were like Blackfoots, like the original Blackfoot, and the kids had to drive through an obstacle course, and then they like they like blew up the the truck. I could have swore that it, that it, I've seen that before on it must have been Nickelodeon, something like that. Where did I put those? There you go. I love it when people know what I'm talking about. That sounds right, actually. Wild and crazy kids. I think... Uh, They were on like a beach, right? Big dude wants to know if I've seen bad taste yet. I haven't. I'm I'm really bad at that sort of thing. Yeah. I uh I'm kind of pissed they uh there was on YouTube there was actually a way to watch rad like, I can't remember the, the where I found it, but basically the guy had made a playlist of just like four or five minute, you know, clips of it. But if you put it all together, it made the whole movie. And I think they took it down. $7 on iTunes. I'll have to find it. My problem is I never have a day off. Or like my day off this week was Monday. I actually got a lot done on Monday. Um, but it didn't involve watching TV. I was uh, uh, 
I should get a lot done. Um, I got my slash. So I, uh, I worked on my son's slash. And uh, show you guys what I did. It's just a regular slash, but we put a uh, brushless system in it, and then we put on the uh, the GTR shocks, and then I found out that uh, Techno Springs actually work perfectly with GTR shocks, which I didn't know until Monday. So uh, now there's a whole bunch more tuning options for uh, for the Traxxas GTR shocks. So this is um, my kid's uh, uh, Plexpec uh, machine for Friday nights, uh, if I can ever get him out to the track again. And so, um, yeah, I got that done. That had been sitting over there for like two months with the intention of, of getting all that done and finally got it done. I was pretty happy. Yeah, I say that and then like um, uh, my Thursday nights after the show here, we're pretty much dedicated to either staying up to watch the Mandalorian at 2 a.m. or uh, taking a nap and then waking up to watch Mandalorian uh, whenever I woke up. And uh, um, let's see, I work tomorrow at noon, so I don't want to stay up all night watching uh, Cobra Kai tonight. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to binge at least a little bit of them before I. Uh, I come back because I won't be able to watch them again and probably till next week because let's see, what do we got tomorrow is work all day and put together the carpet track. Saturday is carpet off road racing with the off road syndicate awards to follow. Uh, Sunday is um, dirt oval racing, which I got to spend part of Saturday night uh, messing with the track a little bit just to get it smooth or whatever. And then Sunday night, I'm uh, working on the track all night until I get tired, come home. And then Monday is track work, manager's meeting, uh, break, uh, podcast, and then back to the track. And then all day Tuesday's track. So, and then I work Wednesday, Thursday, and then the techno series is Friday. So it's going to be either now or never tonight. It's going to be busy. Uh, Nick Moore's on here. Um, uh, speaking of X Max, how often do you guys have open track day? Uh, so open tracks normally uh, all day Monday, all day Wednesday, and all day Thursday. It's ten bucks, um, just a single rate for the day. You can leave, come back. We don't care. Um, uh, Tuesday nights are probably going to be an open night again uh, after the New Year's here. So actually, it's all day Monday. Tuesdays from four p.m. on and then Wednesday and Thursday, except for this coming up Monday and Tuesday, because there'll be uh there won't be a track to run on. It'll all be torn up. So, but that's our normal schedule when we're not building a new track for the techno series. So I'm trying to decide how I want this to be in here. Uh, John Haas, uh, yeah, LCG chassis would be next. I, when I was working on it, I was kind of, I was tempted to go to the Plex and buy a LCG chassis for it really quick, but I had already gone to the Plex on Monday on my day off, um, once that day, and I really didn't want to go back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just going to have to wait. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, watch Cobra Cow on YouTube. Yeah. 
uh, I, uh, I watched a couple of my favorite episodes uh, this week when I had a chance uh, leading up to tonight. And I've watched some reviews uh, when I could on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, I don't know, dude, just, I'm a, kind of a, I'm kind of a uh, sucker for nostalgia. So <laughs> kind of rethinking this layout. I wonder if I need this fan. I mean, it is really neat. So any of you guys that are on here, I, uh, have this cool Rudog motor on here and it's got this built-in fan on the front of it, which is really cool, but it does limit the, uh, I have to have this speed controller sitting crossways. And the more I look at it, I kind of wish I could just put it this way because then I could go for the wires. This is kind of the thought process that normally goes through my head when I'm uh, looking at wires and stuff on eight scale. Ten, 10 scale is pretty easy, but for some reason, eight scale stuff, I want it to look so nice and be so clean. So I'm always uh, like second guessing myself. Yeah, they bought um, Netflix. Pretty much purchased the rights to uh, to the to the series. I'm just excited to see how they um, they kind of group the new characters in with the old characters. I think that's going to be really cool. Nick Moore's on here. He wants to know uh, what I think about the Hobby Wing ESCs. So, um, so I used to run pretty much strictly Orion, right? And uh, the R ones, um, Orion R one controllers I had for a long time in my ten scale stuff, and then I had the uh, the RX eight. I think that's what they called it, R eight for the eight scale. Um, I'm actually letting Jackson Anderson use that speed controller. It still works fine. Um, but um, the latest firmware updates that they did uh, for all their speed controllers um, almost two years ago now really vastly improved, um, I think, how they... Uh, how they work. So I kind of just, I kind of just decided to uh, slowly switch everything over. So I got um, the G2 elites in all my 10 scale stuff. My son actually is still using an Orion, um, but that'll change here in a little bit. And I've got a couple uh, just stocks for when I want to run something spec. Like I just ran stadium truck this fall and uh, you know, they work fine. Um, I like how the box is cheap. The one thing that was weird about the that sucked about the Orion stuff, the box was like eighty dollars. And it, if you look at it when it's plugged in, it's just it's the same thing because it's made by Hobby Wings, so it's ridiculous how expensive it is. And then they had those new lines of, of Orion speaking chillers that were like three hundred and something bucks, and I just didn't see the point. Um, so. That's not to say other brands aren't good. Uh, the Reedy stuff is good. Macklin stuff's really good. Um, I just, I just know that at least the other thing here at the track is that at least with the Hobby Wing stuff, there's enough people here running it locally that you know, if I uh, if I'm ever like confused on something or I feel like I need help, um, there's enough people around to, uh, to help me. And then I can also help them. So, um, yeah, I think they're great. Now we have had a couple, uh, weird dead stick issues where every once in a while 
um, somebody will buy one and it'll just like go bad for no reason. But you're going to get that on any electronic uh, item. There's not, there's not a single piece of RC electronics that's impervious to having weird, dumb stuff happen. So that's what I think about that. Uh, Shane Alberico's on here, and uh, he said he got his M17 uh, for Christmas. That's pretty awesome. And uh, Joshua Bell said shorter wires would look better. They will be short when I'm done. Um, I'm just wiring up everything right now and leaving it at that. Uh, let's see. Except, except the battery wires because I have to have it turned – this way, so there's no real way to get away from having these pick over, but whatever. Big dude, uh, got a summit 116th, that's pretty cool. Jeff Kansas said, uh, he thinks Danny should take Johnny to Okinawa where he and Miyagi were. I absolutely 100% agree, I think that'd be super awesome. I'm curious to see how they're going to use the Okinawa thing, that's why I'm so excited. It's what time is it? Oh my gosh. So we're, we're four hours away. Uh, with electronics, I do try to use um, all the same. That way I don't have all these different program boxes lying around for everything else. The only thing that I probably don't is the bashing side of our stuff. Um, you know, I just kind of use what I have that works. I've got a couple speed controllers that I keep putting in different things. Like uh, there's actually this... Um, There's actually this, uh, um, uh, not Radiant, is it Radiant? Yeah, remember uh, Hobbytown had that Radiant brand around for a while, and uh, I still have a couple of their speed controllers. So, and they work, so I'm just going to keep them like that. So... I don't know, man. I don't know if I need this fan because I can always get a clip on fan that goes right here. I'm, I'm really thinking again about changing this, even though I already got started. I really want it to be like uh, Josh said this way. If I take the fan out, I can put the speed controller in just like this and it'll look just like everybody else's techno car and it won't be a jambled, jambled mess. I think that's what I'm going to do. I changed my mind. So I just wasted like 48 minutes. <laughs> Durr. Ah, it's so cool though. Ah, I'm so torn. How neat is it to have a fan like on your motor? Yeah, it's going to be an icky mess. So I changed my mind. That was like the whole reason I wanted to get this Rudog motor too. It's because it had a fan on it. But I can get one of those cool... Um, wrap over fans and it'll be fine yeah I know I know that's what you meant I, I the more I looked at it the more I'm looking at it and the more I'm like this is stupid why would I have all these wires like wrapped over I guess the good news is I have a metal fan yeah see oh jeez See, it's got these two, two holes right there that I can put a fan on. Mm, come on. There we go. So 
So yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change this. It's going to go down here like this. The wire is going to wrap up. So that's what I'm going to do. My wife just, there, there just did some fireworks. My wife's like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Where do we leave off? Are all Spectrum Electronics one tenth competitive? Um, well, I don't, I don't think the Spectrum Firma ESCs are necessarily meant for like competitions yet. As far as I, I don't think they have like a, like a competition stuff because uh, Horizon owns Orion still, I believe. So they still have that side of it for their uh, competitive stuff. I don't know. Uh, I'd say their servos are really good. Again, um, you know, their upper end radios are fine. Um you know, as long as you're using the fast receivers, uh, and uh, am I missing anything? I don't think they're firmer, but their firma ESCs aren't quite there yet for uh, for comps. I know they have an eight scale one, but I haven't seen anybody using that for strictly racing yet. I don't know. We'll see. I have a feeling that they're going to try to dip back into uh, into the racing side of things. Um, you know, back, back when I was a TLR guy, you know, Horizon had the, the low C, uh, accelerant speed controllers and stuff. And, uh, you know, they kind of, they kind of got out of it and let their, let their team guys kind of run whatever they wanted to. Um, again, that kind of transition took place about 2012 or 13, maybe. But I could see them kind of trying to get back into that again. Uh, most people running fans, absolutely. Uh, yes, for sure. Especially on the B62, because I got that little uh, built-in fan mount, so it works really well anyways. Okay. We're going to redo this. Because this was going to get too messy. I want a clean look. Right? I want to be professional. Which is... If you guys watch this a lot, you know I sometimes change my mind on stuff a lot. Uh, Alberico wanted to know if we still have the Axial limited editions. We do. We've got a whole bunch of them. We have two stores, right? Omaha and La Vista. So we're able to use uh, the buying power of both stores to get uh, what we want sometimes. So uh, we haven't run out yet. We'd like to, though. So come on in and buy as many as you want. I was going through all the numbers to see if I could find a low, um, a low uh, uh, made of number. You know how they're all serialized, and I was pretty butt hurt that I think the lowest number I could find was like four thousand something something instead of uh, something out of you know nine hundred ninety nine nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Why is this not coming off? Some heat transfer. Yeah. Come on, Saturn Aaron. Don't quit on me here. There we go. Uh, let's see.
we have not gotten any clear mini but any mini clear mini b bodies in um they're on order so um John Haas said he stared at his 4.2 for a while um, before figuring out the wiring. That was actually pretty easy uh, for the truck, for the mini truggy. The Mamba is big, though. You're totally right about that. Big Dude wants to know what the best uh, one-tenth servos are. So, um, I mean, my personal preference right now is uh, is Protec servos. Um I pretty much use the 160T and everything 10 scale. Um, for my for this car, I've got the uh, what is that? The 22. It's the Savix. 2274. Um, but that's just because I was too cheap to buy a new servo, so um, it's one that I had um, from last year's 8 scale, so it should work fine. Um, but I think Savix is good. Protect's good. Uh, the newer Spectrum servos are good. Um, MKS servos are really good. Um, gosh, what else is out there? Um, for crawling, I use reefs. I've got the triple five and the triple four in both of my crawlers. Um, just because I'm too cheap to buy that cool $160 Protex servo. Um, yeah, BK servos are good. That's another one. Um, there's just, there's a lot of really good stuff out there. Um, you know, part of, part of what the Plex carries is, is mainly for return, uh, reasons. ProTech will work with us. Uh, Savix, you know, um, HRP, they'll work with us if we have a bad servo. Um, some of the other ones won't. And so it's just, you know, let's see, expert servos. That's another really good one. Um, they were the first ones really to have brushless servos, so they're really good. I mean, Futaba makes good servos. Sanwa, lots of good ones. Um, Shane Alberico wants to know if we could ship them an SCX24, and we can, but you got to pay for shipping. So um, it's up to you. We're not going to just ship it for free. If you want that, you got to got to use hobbytown.com daniel explosions benders on here fender bender he wants to know what our return policy is don't open it don't use it you can return it for store credit uh shane you can get your dad to pay us by paypal and then we can ship you one so Can we order rear prisms at Hobby Town? Well, yeah, we can. I bet you, though, that if I look, let's see here. I wonder if I can get in. Actually, it'll be easier to do it this way. Let me get out of here. Not out of here, but, uh, ooh, I don't know. Do I do that? Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can get in here and look real fast. Proline. Priz. Of course, they come up with primes instead of prism. Uh, let's see. Prisms, 8277. I feel like I'm at work right now. I mean, I guess it is Hobby, Hobby Plex after hours. Daniel, we do not have prisms in because Proline is out of prisms. So uh, we have normally carried prisms, but they are out. So sorry about your luck. It looks like at least 
the pre-mounted ones that we've carried in the past might be back in the end of the week in January, but the other two don't even have dates on them. So I don't know what to tell you, bud. I think most of those guys are starting to use hexons. I think that's, uh, that's the route their carpet stuff is going to. So I know you don't want to hear that because you think they're just practice tires, but hexons are basically their versions of the twin pin, which is what all the J concepts guys are using. So I think that would be uh, a good way to go. Woo. Still 29 people on here. That's pretty awesome. That's a good average. Oh, Oh, by the way, before, uh, before I take off here, um, because I basically accomplished nothing tonight. <laughs> I started and then I stopped to change my mind and we'll do it all over again. Uh, but we are at like 2,040 subscribers now. And uh, any of you guys that are paying attention to our podcast two weeks ago, uh, we said that when we hit 2,000 um, that we would uh, we would do a drawing. So um, check in on the Monday podcast if you're a new subscriber from I think December 14th and up, we're going to do a giveaway um, for some uh, Tom, Tom Rinnernecht, I believe is going to come through in the clutch. Like you said, and uh, um, we're going to give away some of his memorabilia. So, um, so if you're a new subscriber, we'll do that. If you're an old subscriber, um, we'll do something else eventually one day, but uh, um but that was pretty exciting because that we were hanging on, we were like bouncing around. We were like 1992, 93, and then we dropped down to 91 one day. I don't know what I did to piss two people off, but, um, and then all of a sudden we're at uh, 2040 something. So that's pretty cool, man. That's a, uh, that's a really neat deal. Uh, yeah. Shane Alberico said, hey, would you contact my dad about the twenty, the, the SX24? Yes, I will, sir. I will when, uh, when I can remember it. Tell him Shane has the money to pay for it. I heard Shane Alberico won, uh, was it 13.5 the other night down there in Fastlane? Is that right? There it is. Yep. Good job. I'm uh, curious to see it when Emerson wants to spend a lot more time at the track. We've got three weeks. He doesn't like carpet. So we got three weeks of dirt coming up on Saturdays. And then we've got our big uh, February race. So hopefully I can get him to come out to the track with me on, uh, on Saturdays coming up here and get some good practice in and uh, see if he can kind of refocus on uh, RC racing a little bit as much as he's focused in on his other passions like skateboarding. It's gotten really good. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Shane got into his M17. He said he wants to race more because of it. And I can do that, man. That can, it's, you know, there's always something that causes, you know, a spark, right? And uh, sometimes just getting a new car or getting a new radio can uh, can be the cause of it. So that's awesome. All right. Tom Andrews on here saying hello. New Year's is coming. It is. We're uh, we're one hour behind the East Coast, so it should be eleven o'clock on the East Coast. So they're an hour, we're two hours, and then all you guys in Mountain Time and then Pacific get to wait a little bit longer. So yeah, it's nine o'clock. So I'm uh, pretty jealous of New Zealanders. They get to experience 2021 before anybody else does. <laughs> I'm jealous of New Zealanders all the time because the country is beautiful. And apparently they don't have any COVID.
cool guys. And uh, yeah, there you go. The ET dude. I love the ET truck. It's so fun, man. I look forward to Fridays again, which is nice. Joshua bells on here. He says he's going to see, uh, he's going to see us tomorrow. He'll be practicing. That's pretty cool. Well, let's see. I've been on here for an hour and five. I think, uh, I think that's going to do it for me tonight. Look, I got, I got as far as putting, um, stickers in and getting my speed controller where it should be. I think the fan thing is cool, but it's not going to be necessary. If anything, I'll put a fan right here. That way I can have the wires real clean and short and it'll look really good. So yeah. So once again, another, uh, <laughs> another, <laughs> another show where I basically accomplished nothing. So Holy crap. John Haas just gave do, donated a $10 super chat. That's awesome, dude. That's like a practice fee. But thank you. It's like a tip. So, all right. Shane, we're going to get you an SCX24 limited edition. I will get you one. We have a whole bunch at the store, so we'll get one to you. All right. So I'll, I'll text your dad and be like, Hey, your son wants one of these. We have them and uh, we'll try to get you one. So, well, thanks, John. I appreciate it. I know. Uh, I think when we first met, I might've came across as a dick, but I wasn't, it's just, it's just me. <laughs> uh, dirt track is open tomorrow. Yes, it is. Uh, the Plex opens at 11 and we close at eight. So, um, you got all day tomorrow and then that's it. Uh, Saturday carpet racing. We don't allow anybody on the dirt Sunday dirt oval. And then that night I'm tearing up the track and putting in a new layout. So woohoo. So there you go. Um, anyways, so yeah, I'm going to bail. It's uh, it's one Oh eight. I'm going to go see what my wife and kids are doing. I'm going to unplug my soldering iron and uh, I will see you guys next week for a regular hour and a half um, as we start 2021 in a much better way. Uh, hopefully a much better year than this. Although for us, it's actually been not too bad. So enough babbling. I'm going to take off. Bye guys. <laughs>